This is my gift, my curse. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. Who are you? Spider-Man. Cap Captain? Big fan of Spider-Man? Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Just... Hey, everyone. Good job. Hey everyone, Mighty Mr. Morsky here, welcome back to the channel. Now this video is in response to two things. The first thing is the fact that um, the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer came out uh, not too long ago. And also in response to something I got involved with on Facebook. Now, a page that I follow posted an image of um, like the Facebook React. Um, of which Spider-Man we thought was the best. Um, if I just find that picture. Okay, so the reactions were, when they come up, because it, it seems to be taking a while, for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. It's coming, it's coming. Oh, it's here. Um, so the reactions were, react with a love heart for Tobey Maguire, react with just a thumbs up for Andrew Garfield, and react with a laughing face for Tom Holland. I was astonished at how many people were reacting with Tobey Maguire. Now, that's not to say that maybe they're wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong with liking them. But the majority of them were reacting because of their nostalgia. That's where the problem comes in. There's nothing wrong with liking something from your past, you know. Um, but what is the problem is when you're blinded by your nostalgia. Yes, Tommy Maguire was the first live-action Spider-Man a lot of us grew up with. But it doesn't mean he's the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put into video um, my thoughts on each Spider-Man. Um, so we're going to be talking about all three since Tobey Maguire, so we're going to look at Tobey, we're going to look at Andrew, and then we're going to look at Tom. And we're going to see where they were good, where they were bad, and uh, basically who is the more accurate Spider-Man. So, first up, we're going to look at Tobey Maguire. Tobey was Spider-Man between 2002 and 2007. He did three films, um, as well as the tie-in video games. And he was meant to do a fourth one. He was meant to do Spider-Man 4, but plans for that fell through. Um, I think some ideas may have been reused for Homecoming, because we're getting the Vulture for Homecoming, and Vulture was meant to appear in Spider-Man 4. Um, so, when Toby came around, his film, his Spider-Man film was one of the, what I like to call, and maybe what others call, the superhero renaissance. Basically, um, Disney had their renaissance in the 90s, where they were starting to bring back good quality animated movies, the likes of Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, um, and a couple others. The superhero renaissance basically was like that, for superhero movies. Um, now, until that point, we'd had, um, I think, four Batman films and four Superman films. Um, but the last two of each one kind of killed the superhero genre. Superman 3, Superman 4, um, Batman... And Robin, and I think it was Batman Forever, with the bat nips. Um, they basically killed the superhero genre at that point. Um, it started to come back with 1998 with Blade. Um, and we had had a Punisher film in 1989, I believe. Yeah, I think we did. Um, but then when 2000 came around, things started to pick up. We had the X-Men, we had Spider-Man. Um, I think we had Blade 2. Superhero films were starting to gain momentum back, and they were starting to keep coming and coming, and got stronger and stronger and better and better. Some of the time. Um, so when Toby's film came out, he was at the very beginning of the superhero renaissance. The MCU didn't even exist yet. Um, now, when this film came out, I was... Um, 
I was seven going on eight when Spider-Man 1 came out, and I had been into Spider-Man for quite a while. I'd watched the 90s animated series, which I stand by as probably the best Spider-Man cartoon out there. Spectacular was good. Nowhere near as good as the 90s. Um, and uh, also Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro. That game on the PlayStation 1 got me into Spider-Man even more. Um, so when I first saw Spider-Man 1, yeah, I thought nothing of it. It was, it was a Spider-Man movie. The same way as with the Hulk film, I thought nothing of it. It was a film about the Hulk. As I've gotten older, I've realised Hulk isn't as good as I thought it was. Um, and that's kind of the same with Spider-Man 1. It's a good film. Don't get me wrong, it's a good film. I'm not knocking it. But there are problems with it. So, Tobey Maguire was Spider-Man and Peter Parker for that. He has good and he has bad. Let's look at the good. He was a brilliant Peter Parker. Now, Peter Parker is a nerd. He's an outcast. Sorry, just an update on my PlayStation. Uh, yeah, he was a nerd. He was an outcast. He was awkward. He had real-world problems, you know, family issues, relationship issues, money issues. Um, and he didn't have a lot of friends. That's Peter Parker from the comics. And Peter Parker that Tobey Maguire did was pretty much all that. He was spot on. He showed the scientific knowledge. He was a nerd. He was an outcast. He had one friend, Harry Osborn. His family um, was quite small. He only had his aunt and uncle. Uh, so he had family issues. He had money issues. Um, he was awkward. He was an outcast. He was perfect. He was the perfect Peter Parker. Um, and we saw that. We saw him grow with confidence and got more and more um, comfortable in his skin as we went through Spider-Man 2 and into Spider-Man 3. Maybe he could have got a little less confident with Spider-Man 3, if you know what I mean. Um, but then he was lacking in the Spider-Man character. Spider-Man as a character is humorous. He's witty. He tells jokes. He makes quips. He chatters the entire fight. He insults the bad guys. He'll call them names. He'll make fun of their uh, their powers, their costumes, um, their motives. He'll, he'll do all that. He's athletic. He's agile. Um, Toby was none of that. Yes, he had some, he used some of his spider abilities, um, but he didn't tell jokes. He didn't make quips. He wasn't insulting the bad guys. Um, he was just not good as Spider-Man. Um, and the organic web shooters, I, I was never a fan of the organic web shooters. Even that, even as a seven-year-old, I did not like the organic web shooters. Um, because I was always, in the short time that I'd been into Spider-Man before the film came out, I was always brought up, he had mechanical web shooters. And uh, I'll, get, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but I was never a fan of the organic web shooters. And, uh, yeah, he, he wasn't funny. Outside of the video games, and, you know, he was really funny in the Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3 video games. But he wasn't in the films. Which is puzzling. Um, and I know some people have said, well, it's just the script he was given. There was nothing stopping him from improv. You know, there's quite a few moments in the MCU that improvised. Um, think, 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 um, Avengers, the first Avengers film, here in the UK it's called Avengers Assemble, Tony Stark eating those blueberries, that was not in the script, as you all probably know by now, Tony, uh, Robert Downey Jr. hid food around the set, so when he's eating the blueberries in that scene on the helicarrier in Avengers, that's real, it wasn't scripted at all, he was genuinely eating, and the reactions you get are genuine. Um, so some good moments have come from improv, not just in the MCU, but in other films, you know. Um, so there was nothing really stopping Toby from doing a bit of improv, making a few jokes, you know. Um, quite a bit of Deadpool was actually improv, from what I've heard. And honestly, yeah, someone like Spider-Man or Deadpool, there's got to be some improv, you know. Um, but yeah. Outside of the video games, Toby was not funny as Spider-Man. 
but he was brilliant as Peter Parker. I'm not knocking that. Okay, so so that was Toby. In 2012, after the plans for Spider-Man 4 were scrapped, they fell through, they rebooted with The Amazing Spider-Man, and they got Andrew Garfield as the lead character. He's what I like to call the flip side. Not just because that's a Spider-Man reference, because there is a character called Flipside in the comics, um, but because he genuinely was. His Spider-Man was brilliant. He was athletic. He was agile. The mechanical web shooters were there. He was funny. He told jokes. He made quips. He chattered through his fights. He insulted the bad guys, humiliated them even. Um, and I'll talk about some examples in, in a second. Now, the mechanical web shooters, I always think back to an interview Stan Lee did about the mechanical web shooters. Tension. Tension in the story. This is why I'm pretty much against Batman as well. Why I don't like Batman fanboys. Uh, not Batman fans, because a couple of my friends are fans and they're alright. But fanboys, I hate. Um, so, the reason Stan Lee went with mechanical web shooters is for story purposes. If everything goes well for the for the hero, there's no story, there's no tension. So, if his web shooters fail, or he runs out of web fluid and he can't replace it, he's forced to use his other abilities. He has to use his agility, his spider sense, the abilities to stick to walls, um, and his intellect. He's got to use all that, because he doesn't have his webs. If he has organic web shooters, then everything's going to go fine for him. Aside from Spider-Man 2, when he lost his powers, which I'm still puzzled about. Some people have said he was losing his powers because of stress, but his life is as stressful as it can get. His, his life is probably the most stressful out of everyone in Spider-Man. Um, but, I mean, we saw two examples in Amazing Spider-Man where his web shooters failed. When he's underwater, he tries shooting a web. They don't work. So he has to use his other abilities. In this case, he has to swim really fast, get away from Lizard. Later on in the film, his web shooters are crushed. He has to use his other abilities to get up that tower and use the Gnarly device to turn everyone who was turning into a lizard back into human. Um, it's just it's there for story purposes. And again, in Amazing Spider-Man 2, one of his web shooters fails. He has to use the other one and his abilities to save people. Um, and he manages to do it. You know. Um, so that's why I think the mechanical web shooters are better. But now let's get on to other examples of why Spider-Man in the Amazing Spider-Man franchise is funnier and better. Um, as I said, he told jokes. There's a brilliant scene, the opening scene of Amazing Spider-Man 2 when he's with Alexei Sitsevich, the guy who becomes Rhino later on. He's talking the entire fight with him. He's making jokes, not just to Alexei, but to Gwen as well. When he's on the phone, and there's all the sirens, and she says those sirens, he's there just going, no. And she, when she, you know, goes, Peter, no, no sirens. That's funny. That's Spider-Man. And when he was finally, when he finally caught Alexei, and he's there, he's taking everything off him, he's webbing him up, and pulling his trousers down to humiliate him, that is Spider-Man right there. Poking fun at a bad guy and humiliating him. That is Spider-Man. Through and through. That is the character. Um, in fact, I think he was more funny in Amazing Spider-Man 2 than Amazing Spider-Man 1. Because he's there with Electro saying he wants to be a god. What, a god named Sparkles? Stuff like that is Spider-Man. Now, while he was a great, a great Spider-Man, Andrew was not a great Peter Parker. Yes, he was an outcast, but he wasn't really that nerdy. He wasn't really all that awkward. He was maybe a bit too confident. Um, he had a little bit of family issues. He had slight money issues, relationship issues, um, but not to the same level as Tobey Maguire. So, yeah, he was a brilliant Spider-Man, but not so much Peter Parker. Okay, now we come to the recent one, Tom Holland. The first actual teenager to be playing a teenager. Well, now he's in his 20s, but you know what I mean. Um, but he actually looks the part. He looks young enough to play Spider-Man. He's got the the figure 
for it. I don't know. There's probably another word for that, but and he's got the he can do the gymnastic stuff. He can flip. He can so you don't have to use a stunt double. Tom is able to do that himself. And uh, so while Toby was a good Peter and Andrew was a good Spider Man, Tom is good at both. In his brief appearance in Civil War, we saw that he's able to be awkward and nerdy like Peter, but he's also able to be funny and witty and sarcastic as Spider-Man. He has the two down to a T, and from the trailers we've seen that he does have those qualities as well. Um, and that's what's great about Tom. The fact that, and I've said this a few times, and quite a few guys that are fans of Spider-Man with me have agreed. Tom was brilliant in his, I think it was 30 minutes total he had in Civil War. He was better in those 30 minutes than Toby and Andrew were in five films combined. That may be over-exaggerating, but it's to the point, Tom is the most accurate Spider-Man we've had so far. I know people have been complaining about Aunt May, but it didn't really make much sense that she was an elderly woman whilst Peter was, like, a teenager. It didn't really make a lot of sense. You know, look, my aunts, none of them are elderly. None of my aunts are elderly. They're, uh, I'd say, they're like, 40s, 50s, something like that. So to have Marissa Tomei, I, I, if I said that right, to have her as Aunt May, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, and, hey, we live in an age where a 13-year-old can look like they're in their 20s. And look at me, I'm 22, and I look like I'm 16. Go figure. Um, but yeah, Tom has the qualities of Spider-Man and Peter Parker down perfectly. Um, and that's why I think he's he's better. Out of Andrew and Toby, I think I do prefer Andrew just that slight bit. But out of the three of them, Tom just blows them out in the water. Um, so basically, to summarise, Toby, good Peter Parker, not so good Spider-Man. But he was good for what we got. Andrew, good Spider-Man, not so good Peter Parker. He was a nice change, but there were still people that were hanging on to the past, still with their nostalgia goggles on. Tom, again, there are people that are still nostalgic, that are still clinging on to Andrew, that are still clinging on to Toby, but Tom is accurate. Tom is spot on as Spider-Man. And someone said to, that you were asking which one you preferred, not which one was more accurate. I'm sorry, but in a comic book movie, in order to be the best at the role, you have to be the one that accurately portrays them. Could you see anyone else playing Tony Stark as good as Robert Downey Jr. does? Or anyone playing Deadpool as good as Ryan Reynolds does? Or anyone playing Captain America as good as Chris Evans? Or anyone playing Wolverine as good as Hugh Jackman? I know he's going to be finishing, but you know what I mean. Because, honestly, I can't think of anyone else that can play those characters that well. And Tom has the character. Even Stan Lee has said Tom is perfect as Spider-Man. And uh, I'm certainly excited for Homecoming. And, as I've said, Andrew and Tom... Uh, Andrew and Toby, sorry. They were good for when they came out. But accurate to the comics they weren't that what that's what irritates me is when people say that toby was accurate to the comics when no he wasn't um but this is just all i'm saying this is my opinion um let me know yours do you like toby um do you agree with me on toby do you like andrew do you agree with me on andrew do you like tom do you think he's perfect who out of the three, out of Toby, Andrew, and Tom, do you prefer? Which one do you think is the best Spider-Man? Are you excited for Spider-Man Homecoming? Are you disappointed we didn't get Amazing Spider-Man 3 or Spider-Man 4? Let me know all that in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button. Add it to your favourites if you want to. If you want to see more videos like this, more geek-related stuff, Comic-Cons, cosplay, um other stuff like this i have a video that's coming up soon that's going to basically be a montage of 2016 everything that i've done in 2016 um then hit that subscribe button and until the next video i've been mighty mr morski y'all have a nice day